In the following video, we are going to work through and explain some troubleshooting techniques that you can use if you run into issues with your certificate on your Horizon Connection server. So firstly, I want to demonstrate that by double-clicking double the Horizon Administrator console, I get a pop-up here about my certificate. So it's telling me that there's an issue with my certificate, that it is entrusted effectively, and that I can continue to the website if I wish. So I'm going to press that, and then I'm going to proceed to explain to you why this error message pops up. So I'm going to minimize the window, and I'm going to hit Start, and I'm going to type in MMC, and I'm going to run the MMC.exe functionality. This opens up a window for me, and I'm now going to add in a particular snap-in. So I hit File, and click on Add Remove Snap-in. I select Certificates, press Add, and I'm asked which account I want to use here. Now, I can use the user account, the service account, or the computer account. And it's very important that I select the computer account. Because if I'm only dealing with, for example, the user account certificates, then those certificates are only valid for that user. And I wanna make sure that I'm checking the certificates for the computer account itself. So regardless of who's logged in, their certificates will be valid. I select next and I select finish. Select okay. And you can now see that the certificates option is available inside the console window. I'm gonna just expand the window completely to make things easier. Expand the certificates option and I'm gonna expand personal and click on certificates. Now you can see that there's quite a few certificates already existing here, but I'm gonna draw your attention to two in particular. And that is the SA Conserver VClass.local from that was issued by VClass DCCA, which is the internal CA that I have on my system here. And I'm going to also show you the certificate that's issued by default by the connection server itself. So the first thing I want to draw your attention to is the friendly name. So you can see here on the DCCA um, control certificate or release certificate, the friendly name is set to VDM. And that is extremely important. And it should be the first thing you check when you're looking at certificate issues. The VDM friendly name tells the software and the system that this is the certificate to use for your connection server. And you can see above it, I have my VDM hyphen original friendly name, and this is for the default certificate. So when I install the connection server, I'm presented with a default certificate. And in all honesty, this should not be used in production ever. It should only be used in a test environment because it isn't a trusted cert. It doesn't have the same security features in place. There's possible issues with it where people will get too familiar in accepting security warnings and could potentially miss valid security warnings. It can create a lot of issues. So we, we strongly, strongly recommend that you do not use the default certificate in a production environment and that as quickly as possible, you move to either an externally signed or internally CA signed certificate, a third party certificate, but one that is fully trusted and can be configured and match to VMware's requirements, but also your internal security requirements as well. So the first thing to note is the friendly name. So when we have that new certificate that we want to use, we need to update the friendly name, and then we either reboot the host or we restart the services so that this gets picked up correctly. Now I'm gonna double click into the certificate to show you something. So I double click into the certificate, and what I wanna draw your attention to here is that it says you have a private key that corresponds to this certificate. Now, every certificate that you have will have a private key but there's a very important functionality that's needed for the certificate to work properly so if i click on details and i click on copy to file and next you will see that i have the option to export the private key or not to export the private key if i have a certificate created and i haven't marked that the private key is exportable my certificate won't work it has to be exportable because the private key is actually needed when setting up uh, connections. It's, it's used in Java wrappers. There's a lot of functionality that's required in the back end with API calls where if a private key is not exportable, 
you're going to run into huge problems. And it's a very common issue that we see when certs are created that people haven't set the private key to be exportable and then they're wondering why the certificate doesn't work. So your private key must be exportable. So I'm going to cancel that and I'm going to come to the default certificate now and I'm going to show you what it looks like when the private key isn't exportable. So again, I still get the message. I have a private key that corresponds to the certificate. But if I click on details and copy the file and next, I can see that the option for exporting the private key is grayed out. So that means that Again, this is the default search, so it's a little bit different, but it means that if I see this message, the private key was not marked as exportable when the certificate was being created, and this is going to cause me problems. So again, I'm going to close this, and I'm going to bring you back to my CA sign cert, and I'm going to click on details. Now, a minute ago, we saw that when we opened up the admin page, we were given a warning, and we still have the message here with the uh, certificate error. Okay, now I want to explain why that is. So if I come down to subject alternative name and I click this option, you'll see that for this certificate, I have said that it can be SA Conserver of Eclass at Local or SA Conserver. I haven't specified any other name that is acceptable for this certificate. And if we look at our connection server, we can see that the address that gets opened up is localhost. So the reason that I'm getting a mismatch in the certificate from the name that's been used is because localhost is not one of the subject alternative names that I've put into my, my fields here. And it makes sense that it's not a, a name that I'm using as an alternative name because localhost would make this certificate valid for any single machine where we pop something open in localhost. So this warning, it, it's almost like a false warning as such because it's saying that we have a mismatch in the certificate name, but it's an expected mismatch in the name and one that we, we don't really want to be addressed. What you might see people do or what you might do yourself is that you might use a wildcard certificate. And what a wildcard certificate is, is effectively, instead of having sa-conserver.vclass.local, I would just use the star or asterisk uh, key and I would have star .vclass.local. And that would mean that any uh, FQDN or any name before .vclass.local would be valid under this certificate. But I just wanted to make sure that you were clear as to why we were getting a mismatch, and that's down to the local host issue. So these would be the three main things to search for if you were having a certificate issue immediately. By looking at these three issues, you could save yourself a lot of time in being able to identify what the problem may be, and take steps to address this before even needing to open a case with technical support. This completes the demo. Thank you.